Thank you. My Lords, at the committee stage, I, can, I shared my concerns about Clause 9 as it then stood. I'm grateful for conversations that have taken place since that time. I particularly thank the noble Baroness Sugg and the noble Baroness Barker. The latter has listened patiently and sympathetic to me and my friends on these benches at some length. My concerns regarding Clause 9 had nothing to do with the moral merits or otherwise of abortion, but they lie in my passion to see the rights of citizens of this land, both to receive health care and to protest, upheld. Women must be able to access lawful medical interventions without facing distressing confrontations directed at them personally when they're identifiable by their proximity to the clinic or hospital. At the same time, anyone who wishes to protest in general about abortion law must be able to do so lawfully, with the least restrictions on where and when they may do so. I'm grateful to the noble Baroness Morrissey for the proposals she sets out in Amendments 41 to 43 that build on the Australian example. And were they the only amendments put forward, I think they would have my support. However, what we now have in Amendment 45 is, I believe, something that strikes a more exact balance. It meets human rights requirements. It contains sensible limits. It has widespread support and is, I believe, more likely to survive scrutiny in the other place. If it is moved, I intend to support it. Yeah. I accept the remarks of the Supreme Court with regard to the necessity of the subclause A on influencing, but I do have two questions, brief ones, on that matter of influencing, on which I would seek some clarification. Much has been made in religious circles, we've heard it again tonight, about whether silent prayer will be criminalised by this clause. As you might expect, I believe in the power of prayer. So I want to clarify on the record that the act of praying is not in itself deemed an attempt to influence, given that when I'm praying, I'm trying to ask God, perhaps, to change the heart of a third party. <laughs> but my second and rather less metaphysical question is to clarify that influence does work both ways. Would a coercive and controlling partner or ex-partner determine that a reluctant woman should go ahead with an abortion, accompanying her against her wishes, be as guilty of the same offence as was an anti-abortion campaigner? And finally, my Lords, I, I, I cannot support the amendment in the name of Lord Farmer. It would remove safe zones from this bill without providing any obvious parliamentary process for us to re-engage with the issue in a timely manner. <laughs>